Welcome back to the Story of Liberty. This is your host, John Bona. Well, I hope you're doing good this day. I don't know that I have a more important message for America than the one I'm about to give. It comes down to one simple choice, either God's way or man's way. I'm going to say a lot about this in the next few minutes. You know, there are approximately 1.5 billion people living under communism in our world today. You know what Lenin called these people? Useful idiots. If you're a liberal, this is a message for you. I have liberal friends, acquaintances. Lenin, arguably one of the main founders and promoters of communism, called you useful idiots. That's what he's calling you still today from his grave. You're on the left. You don't consider yourself a communist, yet you are being used under the guise of new names like progressive, liberal. You may not even call yourself a liberal anymore. These are the Democrats for the most part. They have moved way to the left and the Republicans have moved left as well but just not as far. You're calling yourself a progressive today, but it will not hide the truth. The question always comes back to, do you believe in God's way or man's way? There's always choices in life and we could go way back to Israel and see the choice that they had. It was given to Moses, their founder. It contained a provision that when Israel came into the promised land, It should be submitted to the people and formally accepted by them all. They were to be assembled in an amphitheater formed by two mountains. The mountain Ebal, a bleak, barren rock, towered on the one side. And Gerizim, the beautiful mountain covered with verdure and beauty on the other side. See, it's the same song, only a different verse. Gerizim was the prophetic monument of the prosperity, the blessing, the happiness, and the loveliness that would follow the observance of the Mosaic Law, the Ten Commandments, the institutions that he had set that were given to him by God. Ebel was the prophetic monument of desolation and pestilence which a disregard for the laws of God would inevitably bring upon the nation. At the appointed time, these tribes of Israel were assembled there between these two great mountains to listen to the provisions of the Constitution. And there they would signify their acceptance of it by an act of free choice, just like we have today. It was binding upon them and their children forever. See, this constitution, if you will, was the substance and the spirit form to give power to the people. The resemblance between the Hebrew constitution of that day and the United States of America. The fundamental principles are identical and many of the details of the organization are the same or similar a system of self-government and public opinion, local government was a powerful element. America's leading statesmen knew this well. They understood that story and they said clearly, only a virtuous people are capable of freedom. As nations become corrupt and vicious, they have more need of masters. You know who that was? That was Benjamin Franklin. John Adams was equally explicit. He said our constitution was made only for a moral and religious people. It is wholly inadequate to the government of any other. Samuel Adams knew it as well. He added a final warning. He said neither the wisest constitution nor the wisest laws will secure the liberty and happiness of a people whose manners are universally corrupt. Do you see? Do you see the basic goal of what is today called progressive? 
It is to destroy morality, destroy Christianity, destroy the Judeo-Christian faith, bring the culture down. See, make liberal churches that preach it's okay for gays to marry and to kill unborn children. There are over 1.5 billion people living under communism today. In times of peace, the communists killed 135 million innocent people. And with abortion, you can't imagine the numbers. There are up to 500 million. Mass murders in times of peace. See, there's confusion today around the word communism. It still sounds like a bad word, even to some liberals. But they don't understand because really communism is the final phase of socialism. And that's what the people who call themselves progressive are really all about. See, socialism, communism destroys everything in its path. It's evil. It takes away liberty. It steals life itself. It kills private property. It kills business. It makes perverted laws and distorts and indoctrinates our young people with an atheistic education. It opens a way for a wise tyrant to enter into power, just like it happened over and over. Hitler, Stalin, Mayo, keep going on and on. The liberal plan, the progressive plan, it's always the same. It's against God. It's against Christianity. It doesn't choose God's way, it chooses man's way. Progressives, they don't believe in God. They believe in man, humanism, relativistic ethics. Just whatever you think is right or wrong. Man's way. As I said, the liberal plan is always the same. The progressive plan. Change the people from within. You know, it's ironic because that's what Christianity is all about, except it's the other way. Christianity, of course, has changed the person from within, self-government. But it begins with faith in God and his word. And then you get good morality and good laws, and good and proper education. And then political, economic, and religious liberty lived out in America. But see, when you change people from within and you remove morality, there is no sin. It's just whatever you think is right or wrong. Crush the Judeo-Christian plan and enter in with man's plan. No morality. Well, my liberal friends, you're being duped and the story of liberty is warning you publicly. Lenin called you useful idiots. That's what he called you on the left. You may not consider yourself a communist, yet you are supporting now as a progressive everything communism is all about. 100% government control that ultimately brings a tyrant. Well, you say you're not a communist, you're just an American who's left. Well, think about that. What is the liberal plan always about? It's always been the same. Destroy the family. Make the homosexual lifestyle acceptable and gay marriage. It ends up destroying the family. The family falls apart, the church falls apart, and then the government steps in. Absentee fathers, Woman out of the home, they go to work somewhere and the kids are lost in some liberal school. And of course we know it destroys business as well. You've pushed the environmental regulation so far, you're destroying small business in America. Destroy morality. How do you do that? Well, you have abortion and homosexuality. And then you destroy honest media where there's no real honest reporting anymore. It's just activists promoting a progressive agenda. Well, I'll never forget when the Washington Post actually boasted that they're activists for the progressives. They love the idea of controlling the media, kill public opinion. As I said, the liberal plan is always the same. Destroy honest media, liberal bias, media control. 
destroy free speech. Now they call it a hate crime to speak the truth about sin. Sadly, get the people on welfare, food stamps. We have, what, almost 50 million people on food stamps. The liberal system is not working, folks. It's going to get worse if we continue. Depending on government doesn't work. It never has. Disarm the people while you're at it and then create conflict between the classes of people so they give in to the government solutions. And don't forget, continue the liberal progressive indoctrination at our children, schools, universities, atheistic education. Make laws to kill unborn babies. Take away America's good culture that we used to have, and now we begin to see the social rot the fruit of the tree is rotten. Also, make America corrupt. We see corruptness at an all high level. Turn the music, the art, the books to garbage. Promote pornography. See, most people think communism will make things fair and just. That's how they think. Most of you progressives think the same way. You think more government, more socialism will make it fair. That's what we hear today. People think socialism, communism, or progressivism, it's the same thing, will make things fair and just. But we know by history, it destroys everything in its path. Morality, law, education, and then finally, your liberty. That's what progressivism is all about. It's not fair and just like you think, liberal friends. It's a downward spiral. Karl Marx, he died a long time ago, the, arguably the founder of communism, but communism did not die. Liberalism did not die. Humanism did not die. And now the new word progressivism is alive and well. It has a new name, progressive. Doesn't that sound good? I'm progressive. When you hear progressive, beware liberal or conservative because it means ultimately communism. There's no difference. Don't be fooled by the name. They have the same plan. Change people from within. The good news is the Judeo-Christian faith has a better plan to change people from within. But as I said, it begins with God's way, not man's way. There's no example in history where man, humanism, relativism, man's way, has not abused his power and put people in bondage. See, without restraint of a constitution, then tyranny has its way. The principles of liberty, the great principles, are all from the Word of God. These were in the hearts and the minds of the American people for centuries. These great principles of inalienable rights, equality, the people choice of their leaders, accountability of the public officials to the people and to God, good and proper laws, justice in the courts, and the balance of power in the several branches of government. Private property, the protection of private property was crucial. And prosperity through generations of family resulting from the work ethic and faith in God. A stable economy existed because it was backed by a hard currency, just in proper weights. The monogamous family. The sanctity of human life was guaranteed. And education was a parent's responsibility. People that needed help, there's always the poor among us. That was through personal charity in the church, not the government system that is failing. We have lost our true history, folks. We have forgotten our roots. See, apart from Christianity, all other worldviews, all other religions have produced tyranny rather than liberty. Did you hear that? History has revealed this over and over. 
All of our human rights come from Christianity and Christianity alone. The non-Christian worldviews are man's way. These are religions invented by man, let's be frank. They never produce lasting liberty. Joshua knew it well when he said, Choose this day whom you will serve. He said, For me and my house, we will serve the Lord. The truth never changes. Honest history, not revisionist history. It proves that all the nation, from ancient Egypt to Rome, China, the Ottoman Empire, to India to Afghanistan, have always produced some type of tyranny in total opposition to liberty. Based on their false religions, these nations have created these systems that have dominated their society, their people. When these things happen, watch out, because the government will distribute wealth, they will create laws against private property, and the family security will be in peril. As we are now hearing the liberal media say that our children don't belong to the parents, they belong to the community. Folks, it's happening. We need to stop this. Many people will still think that these past histories have little to do with our freedom. We could still go down and get a cup of coffee or an ice cream in America, no problem. But if we keep sacrificing our right to the new altar, the worship of man called humanism, we will go down. Down the path that'll end in tyranny. Just like all other nations that have turned against Almighty God. My liberal friends say, let's be progressive. Let's forget our Constitution. Let's move on, be progressive. And I'm speaking to you, progressive liberal. You are at war with God. You cannot win. Hear that loud and clear. You may have your way for a little while, but eventually you will fail. And it'll affect you and your family. But here's our hope, America. There's great hope. If we just trust in the God of creation, if we return to him, the tyrants will have an appointment with God. And why do we know that? Because all the great preachers of the founding era preached it. They knew it, that there wasn't a land beneath the sun where there was an open Bible and a gospel preached where any tyrant long can hold his place. Charles Spurgeon. Liberty is God's idea. Therefore, it cannot fail. It's his loving plan to redeem the world through his son, Christ the Lord, through his church. God's word will never return void. He never fails. He lets tyrants have their ways for a while. Nations rise and fall. Generations come and go. But behind the scenes, there is the divine hand of God working a counter plan. Against all odds, it was Christ and his disciples that transformed the ruthless Roman Empire through the message of the gospel, the gospel of love and mercy and charity. This happened through other great men throughout time, Patrick of Ireland, Alfred the Great, and other missionaries who went to the ends of the earth to preach the gospel. We know very clearly that faith without works is dead. That's an absolute truth. It's time to act upon our faith and get engaged. And I'm speaking to my liberal friends right now. Don't fall prey and consider yourself a progressive and think you're doing something good. You're not. Well, with all that said, what's happening in America today is obviously a judgment from God. America has had many reprieves in past years, past decades, but we have pushed God too far. We have removed God and he is so loving and gracious and slow to anger. He's given us ample opportunity to turn back to him. Do you think our current condition in this country, our leadership, 
is not a type of judgment from God. We have the leadership we deserve. But the good news is if we turn from our wicked ways and return to him, repent for what we have done to offend our loving God, he will hear from heaven and forgive us and heal our land. That's a promise from our God who is a God of love. And let's never forget that. At the end of the day, it's going to be God's way or man's way, which is the highway to hell. For me, it's a no-brainer. I'm choosing God's way. I hope you do too.